Come aboard and feast your eyes, boy. No, 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 no. Not the left foot. Never the left foot. Horrible look. Step with your right foot first. She is... solid? Aye. Weatherly and sleek. She'll fetch twelve knots in a stiff gale, ne'er a ship from here to Singapore can outrun her on her best day. What do you say we take her out? Show you what she can do first hand. Where would we go? As it happens, she still needs guns and the officers to command them. We'll launch straight away. <laughs> Don't worry, lad. I'll make sure you sprout good sea legs. All in the mainsail! Get up the rigging! Hand over fist! Come on, men! Let's get her out where she needs to be! Come on, lad, no time like the present. Take the helm. Double time, boy, it's time you learnt. Come on, lad, no time like the present. Come on, come on, she won't bite. You're connected to half sail. Ah, the killer flies again. Do you feel it, lad? Set a course for Martha's Vineyard. We'll find our guns and officers there. She's a nimble vessel, but the faster she goes, the more cumbersome she grows. And the firmer your hand needs to be. Enjoy this stretch of open water before we come upon those shallows. Call for full sail if you like. Wind looks to be shifting. Stay alert, Connor. Dusty winds can be difficult to manage. Now, take us through these shallows. Careful not to run up on them. The sandbars will slow us down, but the rocks will put a hole through a hole. And if you want to make a quick tack, call for half sail. She's more maneuverable then. Find those other vessels. Hold your tack to keep your right of way. Come on, Connor, keep control of her.
Cottages. We're close. Buy our guns and find our officers. Oh, hello, Miss Mandy. You're looking every bit as ravishing as I remember. Hmm. After all these years, you sail all the way to the vineyard to pay me compliments. We are looking for David and Richard Clutterbuck. Hmph. <laughs> nice to see you, too. Robert Faulkner. Where the hell you been? Sorry for leaving like I did, lads, but where I was going, no one could know. You two working much? No. Between contracts at the moment. Well, we're looking for gunnery officers. What would you two say to working with me again? We'd be for getting into a few more scraps. <laughs> a good show. The Aquila is a fine vessel. We're fitting all the guns as we speak. Looks like your friend's about to catch a beating. Where is Charles Lee? I don't much care for your tone, boy. Hey, you don't want to be doing that, Biddle. Bobby Faulkner turned to wet nursing. Could you finally realize you're a shite sailor? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not in here, gentlemen. Better still, not at all. Bobby, take your friends and get out! Let's go, boys. Our guns ought to be ready. Come on. What the hell was that about? The older man is a Templar. Who was he with? A Templar? The young buck was Nicholas Biddle. Nobody. Sails before the mast. Midshipman for the crowd. Are the guns ready? Aye, but we won't jump in over our heads. We'll find a suitable target and show you how they work. We've fitted her with a modest amount of guns to start, but rest assured there's ample room to add more should you feel the need. Looks like a British frigate with half seas over. Should do nicely for a spot of target practice. Bring around broadside, and when all guns are on target, call fire. Round shot for a start!
ton, boy! Now, aim all guns at her bow and do as much damage as possible. You missed. Best bring her round again. Some old powder in there. Good. Now give the swivel guns a turn. More precise. Hit those old powder barrels and light up the sky. Fast learner. Provided something interests me. Ah. Getting a taste for the open sea, are we? We'll make a jack tar out of you yet. Now we should be getting back. The old man is like to have my hide for keeping you out so long. Why is he shooting at us? Destroying property of the crown, disturbing the king's peace, take your pick! What do we do? Naught else but to fight back! Sink the bastard! Use the swivels on him, Captain! Why is he shooting at us? Destroying property of the crown, disturbing the king's peace, take your pick! What do we do? Naught else but to fight back! Sink the bastard! BB twattled another one. Where in the bloody hell did she come from? Brace!
your first boy, Jay boy Now we best be getting back, or the old man will have my guts for garters. I got them! All of them! You get what I need, and I'll give them to you. Simple. You got a ship, could find them all to boot. Who is that man? Him? Some old salt always on about letters he's got from Captain Kidd. Nonsense, really, but he doesn't hurt no one, so I'll leave him be. Talk to him if you fancy, but be warned he'll chew your ear off. Anyway, the Aquila's here for you. If you should get a pang for the open sea, we'll be waiting. Now I implore you to head up the hill before the old man comes out of retirement just for me. Three weeks. And not even a goodbye before you left. Sorry. Well, what are you waiting for? Put them on. Once upon a time, we had a ceremony on such occasions. But I don't think either of us are really the type for that. You've your tools and training, your targets and goals. And now you have your title. Welcome to the Brotherhood, Connor. You'll be happy to hear there's actually good news for once. Yeah? I've managed to locate a power source, and it's relatively close by. Up for a trip to Manhattan? Is it safe to leave? Abstergo's gotta be looking for us. Obviously it's not safe. Can't exactly sit around here hoping to get lucky, though, can we? We need that power source. Besides, I'm sure you can cook up some way to hide our movements. Maybe. The Templars have access to all kinds of satellites and camera systems. We'll need to find a way to mask our digital signature. I can probably camouflage the van, too. But there's not much I can do for us. That's an easy one. Companies have assured the public that they're completely prepared for the upcoming solar maximum. Disruptions to service are expected to be minimal. <laughs> if only they knew. What's this? A remote operated camera. It'll provide us with a feed while you're on mission. This will let us talk to each other. We're almost there, so listen up. The artifact is in an office penthouse in Lower Manhattan. At this time of night, direct infiltration is going to get you noticed. I think we're better off having you drop in from above. What do you mean, above? Testing, one, two, three. Yep, reach you just fine. Now why don't you power up the camera? I've 
Seriously, Sean? Fuck you. Jesus. Look on the bright side. No security to worry about. And on the not so bright side, the slightest misstep means you're effectively at the paste. Shut up, Sean. Should? It'll be fine, don't worry. Well, you might want to worry a little. I'm pretty sure she was high when she was running the numbers. Sean! A joke! It was a joke! Or was it?
Jump when you're ready, but wait for my signal to open the chute. Timing's really important here. Too soon or too late, and you'll miss the building.
That wasn't so bad. So, you must be Desmond. Not exactly what I expected, but I guess your kind doesn't have many options these days. Who are you? Ask your father. Now give me that. I don't think so. Look, I'm not supposed to kill you, but the boss man didn't say anything about fucking you up. So you got to the counter. So who the hell is Daniel Cross? Believe it or not, he used to be an assassin. The assassin, the way I've heard it told, but it turned out he was a sleeper agent for Abstergo, programmed to infiltrate and destroy the organization. How did he know you were there? We could be compromised. They must have caught me snooping inside their network and sent Cross to see what we were after. If they were aware of our current location, we'd know. Though, I will say this, it doesn't bode very well for future expeditions. I've set up some cameras topside. If anyone shows up, we'll see it. I'd suggest you go see about finding a socket for that power source. Or we can return to Connor if you prefer. All the artifacts in the world won't mean a thing without the key. thought we could be saved. We sought to face the sun's wrath and contain it. Four towers would be built to pull her fury into this place and dispel it. But even with all we knew, with all we had, it would take too long. A thousand years we could labor and still the work would not be done. The first tower was never completed. The project abandoned. We moved on. But while we labored on other endeavors, a few returned. They thought to automate the process. Metal might finish what flesh could not. If we could not meet the sun's cruel embrace, perhaps we might rebuke it. 
Already we could generate fields to protect us in times of strife. But these were small and simple things. To replicate them on a scale the size of a world. We lack the energy to make it so. Half the world, they said then. It is better than none at all. We tried. Again, we failed. A quarter, they asked. Even this we could not do. A sixth, an eighth, a tenth, they cried. The answer was still the same. Perhaps in time a city might be spared. But it was time we did not have. So we moved on. One way to find out. I shouldn't have lashed out like that. You have to understand, I've never been very good at this. Never mind that we live rather extraordinary lives. Yeah, I kind of liked my ordinary one. You can't escape who you are, Desmond. So I've noticed. Look, it's silly for us to go back and forth like this. I admit, I did a shitty job raising you. I apologize, I'm sorry. But it's important you understand it didn't come from a bad place. You're my son. I love you. I guess I was so busy trying to make sure nothing bad happened, I didn't consider the consequences. Truce. Desmond, there you are. Can I ask a favor? Maybe. When this is all over, I'd like to try turning the dial back on the Animus. Like, all the way back. To the time of the first civilization. You think it would work? There was no real loss of fidelity when you visited Altair. Then again, that was about a thousand years ago, and I'm looking at going back at least 70,000 more. Sure, I'd be up for it. It'd be interesting to see what things were like back then. Excellent. I think it would prove most enlightening. So this is how it started. What are you up to? Just brushing up on my American history. I say history. They certainly teach you strange things in the States. Like what? Well, for all the talk of this being a revolutionary war, it was a civil one. Well, not that kind of civil. I mean, there was no America versus Britain. It was Brit on Brit action. And you can clearly see how the whole thing got started. One war gave birth to the other. You mean the Seven Years' War? Exactly. It seems the Crown overspent in its attempt to keep the French out, wound up with a great deal of debt. Believing that the colonists should help to shoulder the burden, new taxes were created. It was a reasonable request, even if Parliament was rather, well, undiplomatic about it. Well, it's not really fair to tax people for a war they didn't want any part of. What? Didn't want any part of? Did you not notice George Washington with Edward Braddock? He was right there in the middle of it. 
So here you have the Crown spending who knows how much money to secure a place for the colonists to thrive, and then, when they ask for a little bit of help... Right, look, think of it this way. King George and the colonists, they all go out to dinner, right? And when the bill comes, George asks for them to kick in and pay their share. Fair enough. But keep in mind, he's been taking them out to dinner gratis for decades now. But the colonists, oh no, they insist they only had a glass of water and a side salad. Never mind the table's full of half-eaten food and empty bottles of wine. Now when the king points this out, what do the colonists do? Oh, they flip the table over and they storm out the restaurant. Probably intending to return later and burn it down. You left out the part where the king pointed a gun at the colonists and asked them to cover dinner for everyone in the restaurant. Right, right, yeah, interesting take. If he pulled out a gun, and I'm not sure he did, it would only have been after the... awaiting discovery? Or might it be changed? Here we learned the answer, and thought that it might save us. They were used to command, to control, to own. But we soon discovered another use. When enough sat in thrall and were told to believe, their thoughts took on form. What was imagined became real. If a hundred minds could wish away a wall or create a tree, what might a thousand do? Ten thousand more? Might we change the consensus and will the threat away? We resolved to send one into the sky where it might illuminate us all. Once placed, a sentence would be uttered. Make us safe. In this way, we would change the consensus. We would save the world. But it never came to be. We sent a dozen of them skyward. But there was no way to maintain control. To direct the beam to enthrall the world, to speak the words. Though this was strange and dangerous, what we tried next was worse. We could not find a way, but forward, we could look forward, and so here we sought to see beyond ourselves, and know what was to come. First we watched to learn if our work would succeed, but the answer was always the same, so we moved on to other things, but she remained, the one you call Minerva. In time, she too stopped looking, and instead began to speak. She called out across time, in the hopes that you might be saved. She hid messages where none might find them, save for you and those within this place. Fascinating. Tired of it. The cryptic warnings, the threats. 
Just tell us what you want! But they are. We saw the Nephilim there. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Imagine trying to explain all this to a two-year-old, to a grasshopper. When they said the will of the gods was unknowable, they meant it. Literally. I killed her, you know. I killed Lucy. It was the apple, son. It was Juno. I saw what she was. What would happen if I let her live? I could have stopped myself. I mean, there was a force there. But I didn't have to. I chose to. Desmond. Lucy was going to betray us and take the apple back to Abstergo. I saw the satellite launched. I saw them turn it on, and then... It failed. Whatever's on the other side of that door, it benefits Juno. We need to be careful.
Good luck, Desmond. These are troubled times. The already uneasy alliance between the Crown and its subjects frays. 
and behind them both the Templars plot, pulling strings and moving pieces. History dictates they seek order through control. But how will they affect it here? Who supports them? And what conspiracies have they already spun? All these things I must determine. For only by knowing Kana. them can I hope to stop them. Spare a moment. Of course. Have a look. What is it? Xingbao, or rope dart, if you prefer. One of the many plans given to us by Shao Zun to... <sighs> Sorry. We'll have to work on this. Ganondogo. Yes, my friend. What brings you here? Is the village all right? For now. What do you mean? What has happened? Men came, claiming we had to leave. They said that the land was being sold and that the Confederacy had consented. We sent an envoy, but they would not listen. You must refuse! We cannot oppose the Sachem, but you're right as well. We cannot give up our home. Do you have a name? Do you know who is responsible? He is called William Johnson. Where is Johnson now? In Boston, making preparations for the sale. Sale? This is theft! Connor, take care. These men are powerful. What would you have me do? I made a promise to my people. If you insist upon this course of action, seek out Sam Adams in Boston. You'll be able to help. What have you done? When my people go to war, a hatchet is buried into a post to signify its start. When the threat is ended, the hatchet is removed. Uh, you could have used a tree. 